Hello, today we will be learning about the law of sines. The law of sines can be used to find missing angles or missing sides in any non-right triangle. We used basic trig last time. Basic trig can be used for any right triangle. But in the real world, of course, there's going to be a lot of instances where we don't have right triangles. So that's when we rely on the law of sines to solve for missing angles or missing sides. The law of sine states that if you take the sine of angle A and divide it by side A, it's going to be equal to the sine of angle B divided by side B equal to the sine of angle C divided by side C. As you can see in this picture, it's showing you how to name the angles on the side. So if we have angle A across from it or on the opposite side of A, we will have side A. If we have angle B here, Across from B or opposite of angle B, you will have side B. And if we have angle C on the opposite or across from angle C, you will have side C. You only need two of these to solve when you're looking for a single side or a single angle. But you can use the law of signs multiple times to figure out all the missing angles or all the missing sides on your triangle. So let's go to example number one do keep in mind that in order for you to be able to use the law of sines you have to have a pair of an angle and a side opposite to it so that's what i'm going to be looking for on this example if we look at b we do have both angle b and side b so i'm going to start by writing that because i know i have both so i know that the sine of angle b is going to be divided by side B, and it's going to be equal to, on the other side, I have to put the one that I'm looking for. So since I'm looking for C, I have to have the sine of angle C divided by side C. Now I can start plugging in the numbers. So it's asking me to find, to write down the sine of angle B. I know angle B is 35. So the sine of 35 divided by side B, which is seven is equal to the sine of angle C. Angle C is 105 degrees divided by side C, which is the one that I'm looking for. Now that I have that information, I can cross multiply. So I'll have C sine of 35 is equal to seven times the sine of 105. Divide both sides by the sine of 35. Put that in my calculator. Again, when you do this, make sure your calculator is in degrees. I'm using the Inspire. So if you have an Inspire at home, click Control Divide to get your two boxes. It will make your process easier. You're less likely to make a mistake. If you're using any other calculator, make sure you use parentheses to separate the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to do seven sine of 105 divided by the sine of 35. I'm going to get an approximation of 11.79 units. So now I know that my C is equal to 11.79 units. Let's look at another example. This example is going to be a little different because if you notice, they gave you two of the angles. But if you remember back from geometry, if you add up the interior angles of any triangle, they always add up to 180. So since they give you two, you can use that property to figure out the third one. So I know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180. I'm going to subtract 70 from it. I'm going to get 110. Then I'm going to take 110 and subtract 45, giving me 65. So I know that angle A is 65 degrees based on the theorem that tells me that the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. Now that I have that information, I'm going to look for the one that I have a pair of both the angle 
on the side. Looking at my triangle, I do have angle B, which is 70, side B, which is 15. So I'm going to start writing my equation. Sine of B over little b equals, on the right side, I'm going to put the one that I'm looking for. So sine of A over little a. Now I'm going to start filling in my values. So I know that angle B is 70. And I know that side of B is 15 equals to the sine of 65 coming from A over A. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to get A sine of 70 equals 15 sine of 65. I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 70. I'm going to put this in my calculator. Again, don't forget to do the control divide to make your life easier and to be less likely to make a mistake. So I'm going to do 15 sine of 65 at the top and then sine of 70 at the bottom. Press enter to get your answer. We get around 14.47 units. So A is equal to 14.47 units. You can also use a lot of signs to find missing angles. So in this example, they're asking us to find the measurement of angle R. Like I said before, look for the pair. We do have angle Q and side Q. So I'm going to start writing my uh, equation as sine Q over Q. Like I said before, you can use it with any variables. They don't have to be A, B, and C. And as you can see, it's always going to be the sine of the angle divided by the same letter as the side. Like I said before, we're looking for R. So I'm going to put sine of r over little r and then i'm going to start plugging in my values so the sine of angle q which is 39 degrees divided by side q which is 28 is equal to the sine of r that's what i'm looking for over little r which is 41. i'm going to cross multiply so I'm going to get 28 sine of r equals to 41 sine of 39. Don't forget, we're trying to solve for r. So I'm going to divide by 28. That's my first step. I'm going to get sine of r equals 41 sine of 39 divided by 28 as my answer. Remember that the only way to get rid of sine is to find the inverse of sine. So I'm going to do that on both sides, inverse sine of sine of r equals to inverse sine of all of these numbers over here, which is 41 sine of 39 divided by 28. When you take the inverse of sine, you stay with r by itself. So now I'm going to go to my calculator and plug all of these numbers in. You can actually do it in one step. So I'm going to do the inverse sign. Control divide to keep my numbers separated so I don't make a mistake. Then plug in 41 sine of 39 divided by 28. Once I do that, I get my answer, which is 67.15. Sixty-seven point fifteen degrees because I am talking about an angle measurement. Okay, let's look at another example of how to find the missing angle. So again, I'm going to start by looking for my pair. So I have a C here and side C here. So I'm going to write sine of C over little c equal to 
I'm looking for B, so that will be my second one, sine of B over B. Now I can start plugging in my numbers. The sine of angle C, which is 41 degrees, sine of 41, divided by psi C, which is 9, is equal to the sine of angle B, which is what I'm looking for, divided by little b, which is 7. Cross multiply. So I get 9 sine of b equal to 7 sine of 41. Divide both sides by 9. I get sine of b equal to 7 sine of 41 divided by 9. Remember, take your inverse sine on both sides. Once I do that, I'm going to have angle B equal to inverse sine of 7 sine of 41 divided by 9. I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to put all of that information in. So again, inverse sine of 7. Sorry, control divide. So get my 2. 7 sine of 41 divided by 9, like I said. I'm going to press enter to get my answer, and I'm going to get around 30.68 degrees. That will be my answer. Hopefully, everything makes sense, and hopefully, you learned something. I will see you on the next lesson. Thank you.